Hello, hello, S members of staff and, and students. Um, it's uh, Nelson Mandela's birthday again, Wednesday. He becomes 94 years old. And I thought to reflect a little bit on our species, where we are now, uh, the role of a man like Nelson Mandela in our development and uh, what legacy there is here f um, for us from his life. Do you know our ancestors have managed to uh, keep our species alive and developing for some say almost 200,000 years. And the major form of education in all of that time was imitation. Uh, somebody who knew taught somebody who didn't. And uh, this worked very, very, very well for a long time until we, had, uh, began, we began to experience uh, environmental change, which made it necessary for us uh, to not only imitate what uh, was already known, but to transcend that. And so we find ourselves in the 21st century, a very, very complicated century, I think, it's going to be for us humans. And we know that there are dangers for us everywhere. I think of, uh, of our economies, think of the, uh, the climate change, uh, uh, th think of the, the um, issues around energy. And so we find then that uh, the challenges that will come our way will test us. And the question is, can we hold on to what our ancestors developed at some time in the last 200,000 years our sense of morality, our sense of what it is to be human. Now we know from history that uh, there is no status quo and that all the development in the world can occur for a long, long, long time and suddenly as a consequence of external factors, often bad leadership, we find that people revert to savagery. Um, Barrett speaks about a, a spectrum of consciousness that we humans uh, um, live by. And uh, the challenge for us is to move um, consistently towards the highest levels of that spectrum and that's uh, service and uh, making a difference and internal co cohesion. Um, um, it's easier for us to work at the level of survival. That's the, uh, the first responsibility of every living creature is to survive. And uh, we've been doing that for a long, long, long time. But in trying to survive we often have to hurt the other. And this moral journey that we've been on has been a journey to uh, engage with our instincts and say, is there another way in which we can actually relate to other human beings? And we've done that rather successfully, except, as I've tried to say, every so now and then, all of that falls apart and we go at each other hammer and tongue. And we think of the Second and Third World War, we think of apartheid, uh, all of those systems introduced uh, which are damaging. And so uh, here we are in this 21st century of ours and uh, lots and lots of very difficult challenges coming our way. And we now need role models. We need to imitate once again, uh, while we are transcending with respect to technology, but to imitate what it means to be a good human. And in our own country, um, and uh, we must thank God for this, uh, if uh, that's how one thinks about these things, or say, well, evolution has produced an extraordinary man, uh, Nelson Mandela, who um, did something quite stunning. After being hurt himself so, so badly in so many ways, his first act was the gracious act of forgiving those who hurt him. Now that act stunned the world and it gave us a sense of just what we are capable of being, the level of humanity that, uh, that we can arrive at. And so when we look then at Nelson Mandela and his life and the lessons that we've learned, uh, it's a call to our consciousness consistently to say whatever we do, whatever we're planning, Whatever our feelings, our emotions, can we remain conscious of the fact that we must act in humane ways, that we must consider the other in whatever we do. So yeah, in celebration then of his 94th birthday, we have an opportunity to do just that. One of the big South African challenges is the challenge of, of um, a community. Apartheid destroyed communities. Before that, the colonial system uh, with slavery and uh, and damaged it uh, dramatically. And so we find ourselves arriving in 1994 with communities that were very, very badly hurt. And if one just uh, gets a sense of what's happening on the Cape Flats at the moment, in Lavender Hill and in Mannenberg, Grassy Park and other places, uh, we are still struggling with this notion of how we relate to one another in community. So perhaps this is the call then that the UWC must make to all of its uh, students and all of its staff. Let us see how through our actions we can actually contribute towards the development of a sense of unity. Um, we uh, as a university can't do that al alone. You as an individual can't do that alone. And we must see, uh, seek partnerships consistently and we must reach out and find those who are operating in these areas of development and we join hands with them and, and strengthen the, uh, the projects that enable us hopefully 
uh, to uh, move once again beyond our instincts and grasp this understanding that uh, we are moral creatures with moral minds and that we must be consistently thinking of the other in whatever we do. Whatever we do. So um, what's the slogan? Last, last year we spoke about uh, taking action, initiating change and make every day a Mandela day. Now it, uh, it sounds like a, a cliche, but uh, let's imagine that uh, for every day we, we take what is the best of this man, how we understand him, um, and we say, can I be like that? Or better still, can I test my actions against this understanding of what this man is and was and was able to do as a human? Um, if we consistently approach uh, a life in that way, I believe that we can make great, great, great strides and there's a very, very good chance that we humans will do well in the 21st century. We'll surprise ourselves and everybody else with respect to how, in spite of the incredible difficulty that uh, we are facing and will continue to face, we remain human. So the spirit of Mandela asks us to be just that and that's the very best thing that we could do. Thanks to all of you, all of you to... Uh, uh, and, and please go out there and see what we can do. God bless.